Hi you guys, Mickey here. Hope you're doing well. I, um, I decided to make a video. Um, I'm potting on some citrus and this video is actually about worms um, because I've been finding so many um, in the bottoms so I'm just I'm not even potting them onto bigger pots I'm just uh, throwing a little soil in the bottom but this is the worm that I'm talking about and it's called a Alabama jumper or a, a Minthus gracilis I think but I don't really know um, you know, I'm, I'm learning quite a bit as well. There's some jumping. Ready for this. Da, 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 anyway, um, what I decided to do is start harvesting them. So that's what my bucket's for. And um, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to take them out to the property, um, a vacant lot where it's uh, really actually just all around trying to build soil. It's poor soil mostly because it's sandy in spots but it's also really heavy clay in others and um, so I'm going to take the worms from the bottom of these pots and uh, and then inoculate it out there so that uh, hopefully we'll get a colony established. Now uh, we just had a big rain so some of these might not have quite as many worms as, as they did I'd moved these pots out into the lawn, um, but what is really cool and what I really wanted to talk about is the um, is the structure that's formed in the bottom of all these pots. Um, you know, all of these holes. I don't know if I'm holding it in the right spot, but all of these passageways, tunnels. That's all. Um, that's all worm created. It's almost like mini hotels. There's roly polies in here. Um, earwigs and other things living in here and just really really interesting structure going on down at the bottom and I, I wanted to share it because there's something to take from it something to learn I'm learning something every day I'm learning something um, so I'm not seeing as many maybe this one will have a few more but um Yeah, it's kind of falling apart. Some had more, some had more worms than others. Some had more structure. Um, you see how it kind of crumbled away, and what's left are these little like bite mark tunnels. You know, that's all. It's all worm stabilized passageways. Like every little hole in here um, is a solid tunnel. And so it might have more to do with the media that I'm uh, that I'm using. This stuff that they are in. Um, it's always what I have on hand, but it was probably, um, you know, just some field soil, like clay soil mixed with um, whatever woody mulch. Um, and I think also a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're, um, all of these pots were, were sitting on top of leaves, on top of, you know, a real thick layer of mulch. And so what I think we were, I was observing was that the, uh, the worms were coming up into the pots as kind of like shelter, um, you know, shelter from the heavy rains that would wash them away. So here, again, this is, you know, pretty well stabilized, but all these holes, you know, every single one along these edges, it's all a network of tunnels. And so, you know, it's, it's getting me just thinking about, because it doesn't, this really dense block, um, it doesn't feel like the fertility that I'm used to, like really composty high tilth stuff you know like that finished compost I've got it doesn't feel like that it feels it feels dense it really is uh, you know this is heavy soil um, but what I think is cool and what is kind of illustrating you know how it's how it is holding a shape but it, that the soil has structure and it still has the ability of for water to move through it quickly you know that's a really powerful thing and um, and so I just I thought it'd be cool to illustrate that for you guys and kind of share it. So it's kind of ironic that the the moment I go and uh, and bust out the camera, we don't see hardly any worms because I was pulling lots out earlier, three or three or four in each one. But that's okay. It happens. Um, here you can see the rain didn't quite you know get it wet, but there's. Lots of tunnels, 
lots of roots. I don't know if, uh, you know if they're helping or hurting. I have, uh, when I was reading up on them the other day, I, uh, I read about how they're very invasive, about how, um, you know, they're a nuisance and a danger to northern forests. They're just disrupting the ecosystem and causing all this damage, and I thought, man, that's, uh, I don't know. I, I don't buy into that, um, mostly because I think uh, I've read that none of the worm species are actually native to uh, the U.S., so they're all introduced, and that populations are always changing. Well, here's a couple, finally. So there's one, and uh, here's a, a few more. So they're small. Um, the reason, now, the reason they're, uh, they have value is because they can do what other worms can't. They're, they're much uh, stronger. They're more dense. There's more, uh, let me grab this guy before he goes away. Um, their ability to, to push through hard clay soils, to, um, to provide structure to heavy soils and to sandy soils, um, that's where they stand alone. And that's why you, um, you know, they sell for $70 for a thousand is kind of the average. So that means they, they're like five to 10 cents per worm. It's a, it's a valuable worm. He's a, a hard worker, part of the, part of the garden. So um, there's absolutely something to that. I don't want that. Um, so make use of that, you know, take advantage of that. I'm gonna put them to work. Um, I also thought that maybe there's something to capitalize on in that, um, you know, like if somebody was trying to monetize them and to raise them, uh, about getting containers up off the ground that they would naturally, you know, like a self-harvesting system. Um, you know, self-harvesting systems, that's like, that is sustainability right there. And so, um, my system, although it appears that I'm not getting very many, I, I have had um, more success, but that if you're already cultivating the worms in the ground and you have, um, you know, you have all of your leaf litter and basically you're feeding them in the ground. Um, if you're, you know, here in Houston, you're going to have heavy rains and those worms are going to want places that are up out of the ground. And so a structure, just like a pot sitting on the ground that they can crawl up into, can become a self-harvesting system where not only are they like self-harvesting um, as in easy to pick up and then, and then um, a screen or whatever, but you're also not severely impacting um, a wild population because there's always going to be worms still in the ground. So um, I just thought that was kind of a cool integration of just having a can yard that was um, on leaves rather than instead of on black plastic and it was in the shade. There's another big one or two. There's a few. So um, so yeah, every, every worm counts and all these, you know, some are not full grown. They get bigger than this. Um, but they'll all be going um, out to a, a new home and wish them luck on their journey. I know that there will be others still around to repopulate and do their thing. Oop. And maybe this little uh, ramble that I went on has uh, sparked an idea for somebody out there. And maybe they'll do something cool with the, uh, with the worms. and cultivate them or care for them and and make use of them so yeah hope you guys enjoyed later so one last video as these worms get their new home from the backyard um, here is an area where I just used leaf mulch and um, it's decomposed quite quickly creating humus so it's only about a half inch but um, as the leaves come down this area will get a fresh layer um, so the soil has been improved greatly just by the compost in this last year you can see it has a lot of structure this is from activity roots um, life um, very different than when it started very heavy clay um, and here are our worms so let's see there should be quite a bit there you go. Not too bad as a just a side harvest. 
they had a couple cold nights hanging out. So I'm just gonna bury them down here. And I'm actually gonna do a couple spots around the property. Um, so we'll let them get on their business and I'll put a few sticks on top, make sure I don't step on them. And let them go back to work. Alabama jumpers, hopefully they're happy in their, their new environment.